Look at the size of that crystal. Uh, quartz. All right, guys, I just want to catch you up on what we filmed last time. So if you didn't see the previous video on the gym museum tour, check that out first. So we covered this whole front room here. There are a few more items I wanted to show you in the last cases that I didn't get to include in the last video. So I'll start there and then we'll move on into the next room. That is one of the most beautiful, perfectly formed flowers I have seen. That is from, that's an amethyst flower from Brazil. How did they have that set up? What is going on in the back here? Okay, so they have it propped up. It's propped up on a, a little display that it's attached to because these are very flat usually. Mm -hmm. So when you have an amethyst flower, it'll be very flat and you have to sort of figure out how you want to display it. Mm, absolutely beautiful. And then look at this amethyst next to it from Uruguay. Wow, that's gorgeous. What's the back look like? Okay, so it's just, it's just plain. That's where it was attached, but the front is just glowing. Look at that. Oh, both of these are just beautiful. I can't get over this flower though. Wow, it's so pastel and delicate and just icy and beautiful. I'm really drawn to amethyst. In fact, amethyst is my birthstone. I'm February 3rd. What are you guys? Let me know what your birthstone is. And also, you know, not everyone connects with their birthstone because, you know, it's really just us stones that were picked for marketing, right? But are you guys drawn to your birthstone or do you find that you're drawn to other stones more? Let me know in the comments below. But amethyst is mine and I am definitely drawn to it like a magnet. Um, although there are several other crystals that I'm really drawn to too, so it's not like it's the only one. Ooh, that Diamantina Quartz from Brazil, Minas Gerais, Brazil. Number four is uh, Smoky Quartz with hematite or hematite, either way, however you want to say it. The Guanajuato amethyst has this beautiful frosty appearance and the crystal can still have a beautiful luster to it and the frost is more like phantoms inside the crystal. I only got a few pieces. It sold out on the website pretty quickly and I haven't seen it ever since. Like none of my oh, suppliers really? have had it. If I do ever come across it, I'm buying it for sure. But yeah, sometimes you get lucky and you find some pieces. It's just a type that you don't see very often and uh, it's a little bit harder to come by. Oh, number nine is from Switzerland. That's smoky quartz with Gwindel. And I'll show you what it looks like here, the, um, the spelling of it. It looks like it says Gwindel, but I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's pronounced Gwindel, like with a V instead of the W sound. That is a very rich root beer colored smoky quartz from Switzerland, oh, wow. Oh, they've got, uh, they've got green glass in here. Because that Fiesta wear is, uh -huh. is radioactive. Oh. More than uranium glassy. Do you have a favorite on this side, in this section? I think it was just real interesting how the copper grew on the old railroad track. Oh yeah. Was, uh, some, it showed how quickly some of these minerals could materialize, and then these core samples where stuff's growing on it too. But otherwise, this uh, has a really unusual piece. I can't believe that that hasn't been manipulated somehow. That hematite. Mm. Yeah, that is very weird. Yeah, maybe, it was... maybe it fell off a spaceship. I like quartz clusters too, though. I just, I, I love crystals. That's got to be one of the most beautiful pieces of fluorite I've ever seen in my life. This one, this fluorite number 16 from China. It's fluorite, calcite, and dolomite from Hunan, China. It has this amazing, like almost digital stepped formation to it. This bottom crystal has steps that are almost like petals of a rose or something. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the color, everything about this piece is one of the best pieces I've ever seen. Also, in the last video, I was showing you guys this Diamantina Quartz from Minas Gerais, Brazil. This one here, it's beautiful. So I didn't get to show you guys this tourmaline next to it, this albite, and it is rubellite. It's a very beautiful pink-red variety of tourmaline. All right, we're gonna be leaving the front room just through this corridor here as it opens up into the next room. Uh, these cases are, let's see, it looks like Arizona. So we've got petrified wood, calcite after glaberite. So did, I guess they consider that a pseudomorph. And then there's some very ice cube-like halite pieces down here. Very cool, so those are all from Arizona. Some more cool slices of petrified wood. 
and then papagoite, also from Arizona, azurite, az okay, those are all azurite, and dioptes from Arizona. I did not know that we have dioptes here. Michael loves the copper. He's really into metal minerals. Yeah, we all have our different styles of what sort of minerals we're drawn to. So in this section, it starts with turquoise on this wall in this case. It's Arizona State Gemstone. They have a nice dainty look, the tiny turquoise beads. They got really gorgeous calves too. Yeah, this native copper. An Austria or something too, but the silver specimen, look at that. Oh, it's uh, all, this is all yeah, silver? That's natural. Oh, um, look at that. Uh, silver gold. Oh, look at the gold. gold oh, I like the gold. Yeah, it's got that warmth to it. It just, it feels good to look at. That is an incredible piece of the matrix. Um, yeah. Um, so what is that? Is that quartz matrix or what yeah. exactly is that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at all those little specimen nuggets. All right, so we just covered those cases, the turquoise, copper, gold, and silver. And then on this wall, this has some beautiful blues and greens like malachite, azurite. Our license plates here in Arizona used to be made out of copper. And they've got a few other kind of random pieces of history mixed in here. More Arizona minerals here like azurite, wolfenite. Um, let's see, what do we have up here? Oh, silver, copper, and gold. So this section here, these three cases, those are all minerals from Bisbee, Bisbee, Arizona. This is some beautiful malachite and azurite. Let's see, that's number 12, malachite on azurite from Bisbee. That's got, that's got a lot going on there. <laughs> there's a lot happening in there. Oh, well, there's a little piece too. Polished malachite. Ooh, that one is very sparkly malachite. Very satiny malachite there. So it pseudomorphs together the malachite and azurite. So all of these pieces are also from Bisbee, Arizona. It's so neat to see the different ways that the azurite forms, like the different types of crystals and how it pseudomorphs with the malachite. Oh, that one is very, very sparkly there. <laughs> if I move back and forth, you can see all of that twinkling. So all of those are azurite. Oh, that one is so sparkly. Very deep cobalt blue. And just below those is a big old chunk of azurite. <laughs> that is massive. And then this is an interesting section over here because you can see how it, uh, you know, how it forms, like what it looks like in the earth. The nodules, pretty interesting. And then it opens up into this section. So we just came from around the corner there and this whole room here opens up into a bunch of minerals from Arizona and Mexico, like that entire case there, that whole wall is all minerals of Arizona and Mexico. Minerals of Mexico in that case. This case is all rock hounding. It has some tools and different things in there. Oh, there's so much to see. And then it keeps on going down the corridor there. And then let's see, this is more Arizona. This Arizona State Mineral, Wolfenite. I think we're gonna start over here on this case. And I can see the pieces that are already drawing me into them. <laughs> like, look at this one right here. Ah, oh, it's Danbrite, a giant Danbrite crystal cluster. Whoa, look at that baby. Oh, that is just absolutely spectacular. Very beautiful Jimmy crystal tips in there. Some of the best quality Dan Bright has the beautiful, most delicate, pale peachy pink you've ever seen. There are so many crystals I've never seen before, like this anhydride from Mexico, number 27 in the back, that uh, kind of pastel icy blue. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Smithsonite, that pink one, number 20, that is a big piece. Malachite, Asherite, Wolfenite, Vanadinite. That number 11, that's a really pretty piece of fluorite on Celestine. 
from Mexico. This piece of quartz is really interesting. It's also from Mexico and it's all windows on every single um, face, every facet of the termination point. Fluorite from Mexico? Yeah, that's amazing. I like, I do like fluorite. It Can comes you in some pretty cool shapes. How cheesy you are, how cheesy they had to be. I, oh, I know. It, it, it was probably... <laughs> you think you're cheesy. No. Listen, if, if someone put me in control of picking out minerals... If no, I, would ever, I, no yeah. one would ever get the music. <laughs> it would never be ready. <laughs> it would never. be closed for years. <laughs> oh, that's a big piece of rosa site in the back, number 23. And so these are all from Mexico. Adamite. Malachite after azurite, that number 25 in the back. Copper in the back and malachite in the front there. Oh, that malachite is from the Milpias mine. Oh, the azurite also. Milpias uh, in Sonora, Mexico. That's a famous mine. Look at that, number 10 is siderite on quartz. Oh wow, there's so many. I love how they arrange the colors of these two. They have a lot of warm tones up here. Right there. That's oh, all just yeah. Let's look at pie. that. Oh. Okay, so Michael loves this one here. This number three is calcite from Chihuahua, Mexico. That is pretty wild. He called it. Uh, what did he call it? Pumpkin pie. Wow, that, that is pretty bizarre, isn't it? Pretty wild. Stibnite, galena, calcopyrite, pyrite. These are all from Mexico. Look at that calcopyrite number 23. That uh, is a big old chunk. All kinds of all kinds of action going on there. That's a really unusual piece of uh, cerusite there. Locality unknown for that one. The calcopyrite is from Chihuahua, Mexico. Fluorite with pyrite, this number 12. How crazy is that? When you really get into looking at these minerals and breaking them down, like the fluorite, you can see the fluorite crystals under there. And then they're so ever so lightly dusted, so delicately dusted with pyrite. All right, I'm gonna skim past some of these. There's some cool pyrite pieces in here. Atomite. And I'm gonna get down here because I see some really fun stuff down here. Like, wait, wait, what is this calcite? Twinned calcite number seven from Durango, Mexico. That is probably not gonna come up on camera how jimmy that is, but that is some very yummy calcite there. <laughs> that twin calcite, it's so jimmy and it just has like every little crystal in there has its natural glow to it. So this shelf is all different types of calcite from Mexico. Look at that. Ooh, that one is bizarre. That one has some unusual shapes there, kind of frosted. And it's just amazing how many different shapes and formations calcite comes in. Whoa, what is that? That's a beautiful quartz there. That's from Chihuahua, Mexico. It almost has that Himalayan pink quartz look. Ooh, that is peachy and gorgeous. Oh, is that Guerrero amethyst? We're, okay, num number four. Oh, it is Guerrero amethyst from Mexico. Oh my God, that's huge. That's like a foot tall. That biggest crystal, oh my word. I have never seen a Guerrero amethyst that big. And it even has the striations, the texture on the outside. Ooh, and it's jimmy and delicious. And it's got phantoms in there, the color zoning. Oh my God. Look at the color zoning in there. Oh my word, it is beautiful. Oops, I bonked the glass. I can't remember to not get too close. Gorgeous color zoning. I've got a few favorite amethysts, Guerrero, Veracruz, Zacatecas, Guanajuato. Uh, I mean, of course, Uruguay has beautiful amethysts too, but there's certain more rare varieties around the world that I'm super drawn to. And every time I see it, I get very excited about it. Like this Veracruz amethyst, all on the matrix. 
It looks like maybe they had to piece the matrix back together, like maybe it had cracked apart, but looks like they repaired it good enough, and it is beautiful. That is a beautiful plate of amethyst there. Veracruz amethyst is more rare. It only comes from the one area in Veracruz, Mexico. It has a very particular look to it, and there's no other amethyst in the world that looks like this. It's mostly a lavender colored amethyst, so it's lighter. It has exceptional clarity. It is just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, the Danborite. Look at this. I was pretty excited about this because I have never in my life seen a Danborite cluster that huge. It's massive. Those, yeah, are, those are massive crystals. That's neat because you can see the biggest ones are towards the center and they have all these little ones kind of splaying out down below. I love Danborite. That is an amazing piece. Oh, wow. Look at that Guanajuato amethyst. Ooh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, I love this one here. This little number 22 in the back that is amethyst from Guanajuato also. Wow, that one's super frosty, Guanajuato amethyst. So many cool pieces. Oh, and then this big old chunk of gypsum down here, selenite. Oh, wow, those are amazing clusters of selenite. A selenite is gypsum, so when you see gypsum written down there on the, on the label, that's selenite. And that's a big old chunk of selenite back there. That's an incredibly clear piece. And then there's like a crazy little curly cue with sparkles on the end <laughs> of selenite. Those are really beautiful selenite clusters. Uh, I just, I wish I could find some of those. All right, so we just checked out those cases. And then in this case, this is Minerals of Mexico also. Oh, that's a really beautiful amethyst up there. Chihuahua, Mexico. Oh, it's so light and delicate. Aragonite, that one is from Veracruz, Mexico. It almost looks like coral, doesn't it? I love aragonite. And sometimes it can look like snowflakes or like giant snow clusters or something. It's beautiful. It can be so sparkly too. Oh, what is that one? A cuprite? Oh, look at that. What is this glowy mountain, like snow-capped mountain peak back here? What is that, number eight? It just says quartz from Chihuahua, Mexico. That number eight is shaped like a beautiful snow-capped mountain covered in druzy snow. It is absolutely beautiful and sparkly. What is this, number seven, fluoropotolite? That's pretty too. Very peachy, warm, comforting feeling. Same with this one here, this quartz, number three. That one is from Chihuahua, Mexico. Oh, big calcite pieces down here. And then we've got a mix of minerals, a whole mix of minerals up here. I'm not gonna go through all of these. There's just so much, and we've got so much more to cover still. Number 18 is gypsum, 19 is calcite. 20 is arsenopyrite. Oh, wow, that's a big old chunk of damborite back there, that damborite crystal. That is huge. It, it's not jimmy, though. It's big, but it doesn't have the clarity. It's mostly opaque, very fibrous looking, but, um, you know, like, I mean, if you were going to give it to me, I'd certainly accept it. <laughs> But I, you know, I do like the jimmy pieces. But I do see it's got some jimminess on some small crystals growing out of its side there. What, what is happening here? Somebody left their toupee? There is gray hair in here. What, it, what am I looking at? What exactly yeah, it looks like am I looking so. at? <laughs> Number 22, Dravite from Mexico. Do we need to brush its hair? Does it, does it have any special care? Number 25, opal. Those little fine sticks of crystals in there are opal. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Oh, I gotta get the macro lens out for that because I just can't, I can't get close enough with this lens. That calcite on quartz back there is pretty wild too. This next case is on raw counting. So we've got like a raw counters field guide book. Ooh, look at that. That's a beautiful amethyst crystal there from Diamond Point in Gila County, Arizona. 
Ooh, I love it because it's almost just clear quartz, but just the tip has the amethyst color zoning on it. Tools for rock hounding, rock pick, crack hammer, chisel, screwdriver, crowbars. Number nine, that is wrapping material. I know you were thinking something else. There you can see the wrapping material in action there. <laughs> this case is the Arizona Rock Hounding Club, so it looks like they've donated like the Tucson German Mineral Society. Beautiful Guanajuato amethyst back there. Malachite, Asherite. They took advice from their mentors to just have Arizona miniatures. So oh. instead of like going like, I got that, that, that. So, you know, the seven million years was a small. Yeah. <laughs> you could do that. Yeah, these are local the clubs. Small. Oh, okay. You know, OPLC, Tucson, Tucson German, German Minerals. Minerals. Old Pueblo Lapidary Club. At number seven, the blue opal, that's really beautiful. Mangano and calcite on quartz, number five. All right, I'm just gonna scan through some of these. I won't go over each one a bit there. Number seven, that prehnite, I love the way that it forms. It's so bubbly. That fluorite on quartz, number 19, that's also from Hunan province in China. That clearly came from the same area as that other piece that we saw earlier. Oh, number 20, Dan Bright. Now that is a Jimmy piece. That is stunning. And then they have some carvings up here. They have some gemstones turned into bowls and spheres. I love spheres. They always remind me of planets. Ooh, and then down here, look at those. Number 24 is a sandstone sphere. I love that one. Oh, and you can see it sparkling too from all the, the quartz mixed in the sandstone, I guess. And then that number 23 is onyx. Those are both really cool looking. Oh, look at that fluorite. The clarity on this fluorite from England is insane. That is so clear. That's oh, unbelievable. Fluorite, so this is all from England here. Fluorite with quartz from the lemon meringue pocket. <laughs> I love that. Number three is fluorite with calcite. That blue fluorite is pretty and then more green. Oh, I love that golden fluorite. Oh my goodness, look how it's like dripping in diamonds. Oh, it's dripping in quartz. That is an epic specimen right there. I really want to find a piece of fluorite that's just dripping in quartz like that. Beautiful pieces of fluorite down here on this shelf too. Ooh, this number 17. It looks like ice cubes dripping in diamonds. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's kind of like sugar cubes actually. It's like giant sugar cubes. So clear that fluorite, oh. And then this fluorite number 20, it has this beautiful rainbow in the very top crystal. Oh wait, no, I see it in the other crystals too. I don't know if my camera will pick it up, but it's almost like amylite in there. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's like it's golden rainbows. Look at that specimen of Veracruz amethyst. That is beautiful. Such gorgeous purple tips. Oh, look at that malachite on quartz with chrysocolla. Oh, that chrysocolla is so beautiful, aqua blue. Look at that, that is from Arizona, Gila County. What am I doing? Why am I not out there? Oh, it's more Illinois stuff? fluorite. Yeah, it's a very romantic light down there. Isn't it? The crystal is just hanging out together. What is that? Is that aragonite? What is this blue? Uh, the blue one, calcite. Oh, that's calcite from Italy, Italy, huh? Wow, that blue color, I've never seen it. So it's like glacial blue. Oh man, I love Herkimer diamonds. This is quartz from New York, the Herkimer diamonds. Oh, they're all stacked together. That is so cool. 
calcite on chalcedony after chrysocolla. So we've got some uh, pseudomorph action going on. So look at these. Piratized ammonites. But those aren't Russian. Those are from New York. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know they had I didn't know. New York. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's cute. We have uh, some small ones of those, I think. I'd like to find some pieces like this too. The rectangular clear. Oh uh, yeah, chunks. That is a beautiful specimen of grape agate from Indonesia. Got some nice druzy on it. Wow. That's a really nice piece. It kind of makes me want some. I don't have any, and I've never had it before. But I kind of want some grape agate after looking at that piece. <laughs> Oh, what, what the heck? Blue azurite malachite. So we just made our way down this way, went around that side. There are some other the small cases over there. I didn't get to those. There's so much to see. We just got to keep going. All kinds of beautiful specimens of wolfenite on this side. Look at this number four, fluorite on quartz after calcite. So another pseudomorph. Oh man, that thing is wild. Oh, look at that smoky quartz next to it too. Oh, wow. Oh, I love the color zoning in it too. Look how it's got the dark, that dark stripe through the middle of the biggest crystal. Ooh, look at that amethyst cluster. That's a really cool one because it's mostly the clear quartz. The shape of the amethyst crystals in there are like scepters. That's really a neat amethyst cluster. Mostly quartz, but then it has the color zoning of the amethyst just on the scepter points. Oh, this is amethyst from Patagonia. I want to go down to Patagonia and go look for amethyst. I love the color too, and it's almost on like this peachy quartz. Really beautiful quartz next to it too with pyrite. Cochise County, look at this. Bird oh nest. my goodness, <laughs> that is crazy looking. It's like little tiny robin's eggs, huh? Calcite bird's nest. I'm kind of obsessed with that. Well, look at another bird's nest. Calcite. That one's not as exciting though because it doesn't have the, the blue robin's eggs color. I'm, pl I'm plotting right now on how I can find one of these. <laughs> when I go silent, I'm just deep in thought trying to figure out how can I find one of those? Let's see, calcite on aragonite. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, very icy. That, that one's like a glacial ice sculpture there. Yeah, a glacier ice water sculpture. Yeah, that's what that one looks like to me back there. It's very beautiful. Calcite, so much. Okay, I can't stop looking at the bird's nest. I, I need one of these so I can just hold it in my hand while I meditate. Another crazy calcite up here, also from Bisbee. That one looks like uh, some marshmallows got stuck together. And it's very cute, very puffy, like uh, clouds or something. Calcite has so many different formations, you know, like all of this is calcite up here. All from Bisbee. We've got more azurite and malachite. Oh, chrysocolla. The chrysocolla is really pretty. That is a nice chrysocolla piece there, that number nine. That's a big old chunk there. Ooh, this one's neat too. This number 10, quartz on chrysocolla. Ooh, that is glittery, glittery, gorgeous. Uh, this one is calcite on quartz on chrysocolla. Isn't that wild? Look at that petrified wood with copper on it. Michael really liked this one. Beautiful formed calcite there. So gorgeous, that pale blush. So we're just starting to enter the next corridor and we're leaving this big room here. All right guys, thank you so much for hanging out for this gym museum tour. There's so much more to see. Wait until you see some of these gorgeous crystals coming up and the tourmaline, holy cow, oh, they are incredible. But we will save that for another video. I don't know if it'll be coming up right after this or maybe I'll spread these videos out and do another vlog in between. All right guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one, bye.